right, I think we're recording and I'm gonna share. Move everybody off the big screen. So here we are. Woo. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna start from the beginning and the beginning is of course, where do we want to start from? So we're going to do the entire thing like nothing was ever given. And that way, when you get a repo that is partial, all of these fundamentals will make sense and you won't have to really spend much time worried about those. So I'm gonna go to Lambda and inside of Lambda, I'm just gonna make sure what I got going on here, yeah, okay. I'm gonna make a file. We're just gonna call this uh, Sprint. I'm just gonna call it Sprint Challenge 1. Yeah, PT31. All right, I'm gonna CD into that. And note we are clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a Visual Studio Code instance. And yeah, I don't need that Kubernetes open yet. So we're completely empty and we're just going to work inside of here for a while. So there are a few things that we need. And if you're not uh, brushed up on your terminal commands, of course you can do that. You can create over here, but I'm gonna do everything in terminal, saves a lot of work. And there's two things that we need right off the bat, actually three things. So we need to have a path file. So let's go ahead and create that. We're gonna to say touch. And this is just going to be index. Um, and this is going to be our home, right? And the next thing that we need to do is we need to make this a Git repository. And we do that with the nice, simple Git init. And now if you were to do an ls-al, no, I don't want that. Then you notice we have this dot git that just, that's where uh, it's hidden, but that's where Git keeps all of its log information and everything that it needs. The next thing that we want is a package JSON. And to create that, we say npm, and then we just want to say init. And I'm gonna walk you through it, although normally I would just say dash y, but we'll just walk through it real quick. And can everybody see the screen? Or I guess everybody can see the screen, but can everybody see the the uh, Visual Studio Code. Shout if you can. Yeah, I can see it. No problem. Okay. okay, good. All right. So package name. If it notice it has a little default there. I'm just going to hit enter and accept that. Version is fine. Description. Uh, we'll just say live coding practice. Entry point. That's why we created our index.js so it knows where to put it. Test command. We don't have to worry about that. Git repository. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, keywords, I'm just going to get put uh, uh, PT31 and node. And the author, I'm just going to put my GitHub handle, which is Mr. Zach Smith, and yes. So if we look at this, we now have a package JSON. And while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of scripts. Let me just get that out of the way. We want to start script. That will be node at index.js. And I'm going to go ahead and make a dev, which will be our nodemon server. Uh, we don't have it installed yet, but we will in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, the next thing I want to do is create a um, getting ignore. And we do that with npx. So npx is a is a way to install packages directly without them uh, downloading, right? So we get to use the functionality kind of off the cloud, if you will. And so I'm gonna say npx, get ignore. And what do we wanna get ignore for? We want it for node. And that will create our get ignore. And let's just run over here and make sure that the most important one is now oh, they keep changing it on me. NPM 
there it is. This one right here, dot env, right? We do not want to put it, push a dot env file. So we want to make sure that's there. And then the other one that we want to confirm, and again, if you, if, uh, you use the npx get ignore uh, package, it will also include node modules. Of course, we could do this from scratch, but why? Okay, <clears throat> so at this point, we have the basics down. And the next thing I like to do is go ahead and lay out structure. Right? Get that out of the way the best that we can, and we don't have to think about it. Now you don't have to worry, we're not going to do back uh, database stuff tonight, but when you learn database, I include the database creation here as well. I do everything that I can do so that after that, it's just write and test code. So get all of this, you know, this the secretarial kind of things out of the way. So let's look at structure, all right? and. I'm gonna say make dir, because I wanna make a directory. I want an API directory. Um, what else do we want, right? Well, maybe we want routes. We would have models. We're not gonna make any models tonight, but we would have models, you know, whatever it is that you feel that you need. Um, possibly utils, if you're writing some, you know, utility functions. I mean, the list can go on, middleware, a whole list of things. But for right now, I'm just going to say API and routes. Now, this is the way I like to structure my backend. Um, you don't have to do it my way. This is generally the kind of way that we teach at Lambda, but you can find what works best for you as long as it maintains industry standards. So I write what's called an MRV, so model route view uh, controllers. And so this, this model routes and controllers, that's a separation of your code even more than what we do now. So um, you'll find your path. If you decide to work in backend and you want to continue, you'll find your path. But just remember that you want to structure everything that makes the most sense and that adheres to um, you know, an industry standard because you want your code to be understandable by your peers. All right, so I'm gonna create those. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a couple of other files. So I'm gonna say touch API and I want a server JS. And for routes, um, let's just say, I'm gonna call it data JS just because I'm terrible at coming up with names when I don't know what I'm, you know, this isn't like a pre-built lesson plan. We're doing it as I would do it, setting at a job. And so I'm not sure what we need. So we'll call it data. All right, and we have those. Now at this point, I wanna go ahead and do a get commit because I want to have this structure and I call this initial commit. Um, I want to have that created. If you're not familiar, if you do git log, you can actually go in and see every commit that you made. In this case, we've only made one. But this is an easy way to see where you're at if you have to back up to a particular commit you want to. Let's say you want to go here, which is where we're at. Um, and I also do all this on the main. I don't actually break out to a branch until I actually write code that's specific to the back end. I mean, there's it's irrelevant whether or not it breaks it at this point because <laughs> it's the only code that's there, right? So we got that. And now we can go ahead and install some packages. So I will take a pause for a second. And any questions to this point? Right, I don't hear anyone, so I'm gonna assume all is happy in the world of everyone. All right, let me see here. Okay, all right. So 
which packages do we want? I tend to work with the easiest first. So that would be npm i-d nodemon because that'll only, only have one going into a dev package. Now I can go ahead and do several of them at the same time. So we know we need express. What else do we need? I like colors because I like to color. Uh, we also need things like helmet. This is for security and get in the habit of using it. Cores, we need that. Morgan is for logging. Morgan, if I can spell it right. We also need .env. Um, that's a good start for now. I'm gonna go ahead and install all of those. So now at this point, we have all the tools, generally speaking, that we need to be able to start to build our backend. And we're in about 12 minutes in. We built it from scratch. Everything is good here. I'm gonna do one more git and uh, git commit. And here I'm going to say uh, basic um, commit because this is my own internal knowledge that tells me now I've installed packages and everything else. All right, let's start working with code. So I'm going to go ahead and oops, I don't want that. And let's say that I want to start with index. I like to build out and then refactor. It takes conceptually, it may seem like it takes more time, but it allows you to work a lot faster because you're not trying to super superimpose or outguess or anything like that. You can just do it very easy. So I'm going to say const express is equal to require express. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and create a server. And that's equal to express. I'm going to create a port. And remember, we're, we have a .env file for a reason. We're going to be using it in a second. So just add it now. Okay. And I happen to, oops. Um, I'll leave it at 3000 normal because when I create my port, I have my own number that I like. And then I'm going to create the listener, which will be port. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a console log. And again, a lot of this kind of thing is just my personal structure. It's how I like things. You'll develop your own, but server is running on and then um, port and we just want to put in our port and I've already installed colors but I haven't called it in yet but I'm going to go ahead and put that in here as well okay so now I need to invoke or add a couple of uh, packages right off the bat right so Always put your .env config at the very top. And that way, because of the way the JavaScript works, that means that it's therefore accessible to everything that falls below it in the code. Because when it's all said and done, it ends up in one great big JavaScript file, right? One big long JavaScript file. So it allows us to just put it at the top. Right, and I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, we need a dot inside of there. And I'm gonna require colors. Now there's another one besides colors, it's called chalk. Some people like it better. I hate the word chalk, trying to say it and spell it. <laughs> so I went with colors, although it does bring out a bit of the gangster in me. All right, at this point, I want to go ahead and start my server. I always start my node server first to test it. It's running, okay. Because when you deploy, if your start script is not right, it will not work. And so I always test it that way. I don't ever have to worry about it again. I know that it'll work. It's good to go. I can close that. 
I also want to create a dot env file and that dot env file oops they won't let me in there because it's hidden uh, or for now it's just going to get our port and I like 4040. Now I'm going to save this again we won't need this for a bit and now I'm going to go ahead and run my dev server and we are good the port is right. Take a pause here again and questions. Quinn and the cat say no. And I hear nothing else. So I'm going to assume that means we're all good. Now I want to go ahead and refactor real quick. So to refactor, I need to grab these two lines only. I want to leave dot e and v at the very top as well as colors. I want to leave port here because we call port. So I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to go to server. I'll go ahead and paste those in. And now we have to do a couple of things, right? So the most important thing that we have to do is we have to uh, we have to export. Ah, sorry, I've been doing React today. Uh, module. Ah, come on. There we go. So we want to export the server. And then we have to import the server. If you do not use IntelliPath Sense, I think is what it's called, or IntelliSense Path, one of the two, you absolutely should. And I'll show you why. When you're setting up a path, it allows you to tag a dot and say a slash, and it shows you everything that's accessible to it. So for instance, if I messed up and I put double slash, I'm like, wait a minute, that's taking me out of the project. When you start getting really nested files, this will save you so much so much time so i want api and inside api i want server now i want to save it again and make sure i'm still working so we have now refactored our code and we're adhering to a standard um, industry standard now a lot of people will call the server app it kind of comes down to personal choice. Um, we are building a server, not a fully functional app. So I call it server. If I have server side rendering, where I'm rendering pages on the back end, um, then I'll typically call it app. But there's no right or wrong. Uh, like I said, part of it will be where you um, end up working or what your preference is. But you will see a lot of, if you do tutorials and look at code, you'll see a lot of them called app. So just so you know. Okay, so we're here. And now we need to go ahead and bring in all of the rest of our packages that we know we need. So I'm gonna say from here, cons, what do we have? And if you're, you forgot what we have, you go here and you can look at them. Well, we got cores. Helmet and Morgan. Those are the three that we need to bring in. Always put helmet on top because it's related to security. Next is cores, which is security. And finally, Morgan, um, which is our logger. So we have now brought in our packages that we're currently using. We also need to make sure we do a couple of things. And the most important one uh, is that you don't forget is your express.json. This is how you send data from the rec.body into the rec.body. And if they send you an object from the front end, this is how you accept it. It's one of the most forgotten uh, pieces of code that we <laughs> in, in there because it doesn't seem to do a whole lot. But if you've done everything else and you're just not getting data in, most likely you probably forgot that. 
So we're going to go ahead and invoke a couple of others using our middleware. I want to go ahead and put in helmet again. And oops. then we want our cores. And cores errors are probably the single most annoying error that you'll get from the back end. It's the hardest to track down. So if you get a course there, you, there's about 10 steps that you have to go through and it's just a royal pain. So make sure you have it, start with the simplest option and then move more complicated. And you can do things, you can actually say, well, we want to accept all um, and you can begin to narrow it down. But for training purposes, just leave it empty unless you have an issue and then start the process. And the last thing that we want is uh, we want to include Morgan. Morgan, and I like dev, but there is tiny. Uh, there's several of them you can go and look, but dev is the one that I prefer. And again, I've wrote some code. None of this should have any real impact, but nonetheless, Let's save it and lo and behold, something broke, right? And we can say, what's the deal? Oh, yes. Let's put that in quotes because we're using middleware and save it again. There we go. Now at this point, the next thing I want to do is I want to test, create a test to make sure that I can provide information to a browser. And we do that by creating a simple route. I'm going to say server.get. I'm just going to leave it at slash. And then I'm just going to say res.send something and save it. Should build. And I want to check that something is running. Wow, I've got a lot of these in here. So you can tell <laughs> everything I do is on 4040. You'll find your own. Everybody has the ones they like. Um, and so we're going to go to 40, 40. And I'm using the Thunder client for basic testing. Um, so I don't have to leave Visual Studio Code. And I use it up until I have to start really putting some pressure on my back end. So just basic things like this works wonderful. So I'm going to send it. And we got something back. So we got a 200, we got something back. And if we look at our terminal display down here, Morgan is telling us that we sent to get, it was at slash, we got a 200, and this is the time that it took for it to work. So we're in a good spot. Let's close that. Now that I like to have a endpoint that serves function because what'll happen is somebody, you, front end developer, boss, somebody's gonna say, well, I don't think your front end's working. It's not up or your back end's not up. Your front end developers will tell you, your server's down. I like to go ahead and create a solution to that right at the beginning. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say status and I want to send a 200 and I wanna send a JSON back. And what I want to send is I'm gonna send three things. I'm gonna send a status again, because this is going to be shown in the browser and we want them to see that we have a status 200 if they get this. I like to include a message and say, this API is running, you know, Batman wins, it doesn't make any difference, right? Right. So, and then the last thing that I do, and I do, I started doing this honestly, <clears throat> just out of a little bit of spite because I would get the, you know, they'd say, well, yeah, but when, when was that live? When did it work? So I put a way to tell and I just put time or current time. And then I put a new date and I use two local time string and I invoke that. So now when I save it, and we can either 
test it here. We send it. So notice we get our status, our time, and our time is local to us. So for me, it's 7.32 and 28 seconds. If I hit it again, 7.32 and 40 seconds. The other thing is that it allows me to, let me show you this. Let me. So if I come here and I go to localhost 4040, it's also running. So I can just point them to wherever it's deployed. So at this point is when I, I would normally deploy. But we have a couple of situations. The first situation is that if I, I'm going to go ahead and commit real quick. I'm going to say here, I'm going to say that basic server. So again, this is my way to remind me that at this point, the server was running. Everything worked at this point. We are good to go. Now, if I do a git push origin, and notice that it's not auto-completing for me. So if I, I try to tab that, nothing happens. And I can check and say, well, wait a minute, git remote dash v, there's nothing there. Well, we didn't connect this to a GitHub repo yet. So we're gonna do that next. And I'm gonna go ahead and open GitHub, and I'm going to create a new repository. I'm gonna make this one public so that you guys can take a look at it. And we'll call this Sprint Challenge, I don't know what I called it, what did I say? One PT31. Now, here's the important thing. Don't check anything. You want to completely empty. So uh, it takes a repository name and a distinction, public or private. Let's make it public. I'm going to create the repository. And we end up at this fancy little page. So generally speaking, you follow the instructions right here. Now, some of this we've already done, but we're going to go ahead and pretend like we've done some of it and not the other, just so you get a little bit of experience. I want to move this over here for a minute. And I want to start right here. Echo with this. I just copy that. Come around over here, drop it in. And that creates a readme. And that's the next line. It says git init. Well, we've already done that, right? Now, the next one says git add readme. Well, we have not added that yet. So I'm going to go ahead, paste that. The next one says git commit, first commit. Now we've done a first commit. Right? And so I will just say git commit dash m readme. So we've added that in. We don't have to do this git branch main. If I do a git branch, I'm already on main. And the default now is main. If you've been doing it a while and you have an old repo, it used to be master, but um, over the last year and a half, it's changed. But if by chance you do a git branch and it's on master, you can use this right here to switch it to main. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this git remote add origin. So this says we want to add a remote to our origin and origin is always your local computer. The thing you're working on is the origin. And we want to connect the origin to this repo. So I'm gonna grab all of that, come down here, paste it. And finally, I'm just going to follow the last line and we can just copy that too and paste that. Now, if it, everything went well, it'll run through, you'll see this. And if you come back over, and refresh, we now have a repo. So we've made quite a bit of progress. I'm gonna stop for questions and then we're gonna deploy it.
I always deploy first, and you'll see why here in a second. Questions? Quinn's good. Cynthia's good. Nicole, you're highlighted like you're going to talk, but no. I don't hear you. No questions. All right. And I know Mark is traveling, so we're going to assume he's good. Now let's deploy it. And honestly, I deployed everything as a student. I deploy everything that I'm working on now. And the reason for that is it's much easier to upgrade than it is to wait to the very last and then have a lot of problems. Right? Resolve problems at the beginning. It's far easier. So, and since uh, that was your lesson yesterday, right? We might as well do it. So let's do it. I'm going to go to Hiroku. And go to the hint. I'm going to log in. I'm going to go to new. And you can see I have a lot of projects and they just go on and on and on. Create a new app. I'm going to name it the exact same thing because not too long from now, I'll end up deleting it. So that way I can keep it all track. Create the app. And you can do these instructions. You can go through all of this. And I'm a, a command line kind of guy. I love command line. I use it all the time. However, it's just much more complicated to set it up with Heroku. I mean, you got all of these things that you got to do in steps. I don't, and it goes down all the way to here. Much easier just to say GitHub. Good with that, right? I want to find a repo. And what did I call this? SC1. Let's search. Really? There it is. Okay. And I want to connect that. I then want to say, yes, I'm going to leave it on main. I'm going to automatic enable automatic deploys and I want to deploy from this and let's deploy it. So this will get started. This will run through. You can also come up here and go, oops, no, go right here and go to console and logs if you need the terminal in Heroku like you would locally. Um, but it says it's deployed. Let's view it and lo and behold, we are live on Heroku at that endpoint. Okay. Now it's set up every time we make a push, it'll automatically update it for us. And unless we just push some bad code where we break it, it will continue to run. At this point, I switch to a branch. And I don't switch to my name. That's about as useless as calling yourself your name as you're looking in the mirror, right? You want to create a branch that actually says what you're doing. And so here, I'm going to call this branch server basic. Just so that I know that this is the basic server, not the really complicated things that we may do down the road. And I'm going to check, get branch, just to make sure we're on server basic. So we have tested it locally here. We have deployed it and it's working here. We're at a pretty good spot, right? We've done a whole lot in 30 minutes now. Now we can actually start to figure out what we want to do. So let's create a route for data and we're going to need to do a couple of things to create a route, right? And we're just gonna start with creating our router. And I'll show you both ways. I think I've showed everybody this, but just in case we haven't. So this is the one liner. And we say create a router, require express, and we invoke the router method. The other way you can do it is you can say const express is equal to require express const router is equal to express our router. 
your choice. I like clean short code. And the next thing I always do is I want to go ahead and export it. So I don't forget, right? Do all of the things that are easy to forget, but are standardized, do those first. So I want to go ahead and create a router. And now what I want to do is create a really simple route, right? And so I want to do a route.get, and we're gonna leave it at slash because we're gonna set a route. I'm gonna set it up, and this time I'm gonna say res.send from route. I'm gonna save that. Notice we're still live, good. And now we need to import our route. I like to import my routes right here. And this is going to be called a data router. Make your names clear and easy to understand. And again, AI is trying to help me. If you notice, dot slash only takes me to server. Dot slash, double dot slash allows me to find my routes. And now my data. And then I want to go above this and go ahead and say server.use. Oops, there we go. Ha, there we go. And I want to put this at slash. And where do I want it to be? Well, I want to be API. I like diversion. And this is data. And it's going to use the data router. So I want to save it. We did not break. I want to go over here to my request, API slash V1. If I can get there, data from route. Good. At this point, you have a couple of options, right? You can push it. I'll wait just a minute because we're going to modify that code just a little bit and then I'll push it and we'll test it on Heroku. Make sure that it works all three places. Everything works. We are happy developers. So what are we going to do from here? I don't know. We don't have a back end. So I'm just going to create a data object. I think maybe it says you can do data however you want um, in the sprint challenge. So let's just say I have no idea food because I'm hungry. So food, oops, we want to create an uh, array of objects. And inside of there, I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to say, yeah, we'll name it. And let's give it a score. Pizza, five stars. All right, let's copy this. And let's just put it a couple of more in our, so we have some data to work with. We'll do three, change this to two, change this to three. Um, hot dog, you know, let's go with a hot dog. I always forget, is hot dog one word or two word? I don't know. We're gonna make it, it just doesn't look right. Huh. And uh, let's say, what else is there? Something I can spell. I guess I can spell solid, hopefully. And Oops, so this is telling me I need that. And we'll say a hot dog is a two and salad is a three. All right, so now we have some data and what we want to do in our get route is just return data, right? That's the point of the get route. So I'm gonna say, there's a couple of options, but we always recommend starting easy. So let's just say status 200. And we're going to send food. I'm going to save it. That's good. I come over here and send it. I've got food here. Excellent. One, two, and three. So now this could potentially be done, right? But let's, we want to do a couple of other things with it. And I'm going to cut this out just for typing purposes because it makes it easier. I'm going to make it async because generally you probably want to. And I'm going to put a try catch. 
And inside of my try catch, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Sometimes help is not helpful at all. Let's see, there we go. I'm, beta, I'm helping beta test this AI for GitHub. Sometimes it will mess your code up. All right, so here I'm gonna console log error message. Ah, come on now, there we go. And I want to return it to the user as well, right? And so I'll go ahead and do a status of 500. And I want to return the message, server error is good. And that way, if we break, then we have something to work with, right? Both, I don't have to check it necessarily. I don't have to go back and forth, I can see. And now we can go ahead and say, well, const food data is equal to await. And normally this is where we would have our model call, right? We would say model new model dot, oh, it's not gonna let me, it seems to think it knows what it's doing. Say probably a five. And obviously we don't have a database to contact, so we don't need that, uh, but that would be the structure that you would want to make. And I'm gonna go ahead and return, wait, oops, and, uh -huh. and so we have this weird syntax, right? And I don't really need this for this purpose. So I save it, I'm going to go ahead and run it and check it again. I wrote some code. I want to make sure it works. It's still working. And so now we're returning using a promise, which we would normally do. Now, because the code is right here, it can do it in an instant. So it doesn't need it for here, but it's a good practice. Questions? No? All right. I want to look at, um, I want to go ahead and do, uh, watch the automatic deploy. So let's do that. So I'll check the status just to make sure what we got. Now yep, that makes sense. Get stat, oops, get add, get commit. And here I'm going to say data route. So that's what I did. Get push. So now we're on a branch, right? And so I'll look at it and I'll say get and whatever did I call it? I called it server basic. So I'm going to push that. We go to Heroku. Of course, nothing should happen, right? Because we're not on the main branch and we deployed the main branch. I'm going to come over here to my code. Ah, uh, yes, we got a pull request. We'll look at the pull request. Able to merge. There's no conflicts happening. I could add extra stuff if I wanted to, add more stuff here, you know, if I wanted to. I'm gonna create the pull request. And I don't have any testing set up. Normally I would have some testing um, to check it. There are a couple, but they're just minor, but there's no conflicts at this point. And we know that the code is working fine locally because we just ran it and tested everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge. Confirm the merge. And normally at this point, I would delete the branch. I don't want it anymore. Can't get it out of my way. And so I look here one minute ago. So if I come back to Heroku, build is in progress. And just because I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to it, I like to watch the thing happening. Uh, <laughs> Just so if I, it breaks, I can see it break. And it says that it's deployed. If I come back and look at it, it says it's deployed. So I should be able to, wherever it's at, there it is, refresh this. And notice now the time is really whacked, right? 1.52.07. Well, we have it set 
to the local time of the computer that it's on. So I don't know where it's at, but apparently it's six time zones ahead of me. But it's live. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and check our next route that we just built. Now, remember, you can only check Git routes on the browser. Everything else has to do, be done through a, a client. But if this runs, then we're at a pretty good spot and we have our data. At this point, it becomes build your next route. If you have to build your model, which you don't have to do at this time, but if you have to build your model, I always build my model then I build my route. Everything is working. I will go to the next model. So it might be a find, then I do a find by ID, but I go back and forth, back and forth. And I always start with the easiest first. The easiest is a git because it's just, you find. The next easiest is a git by ID. Now that takes a rect uh, param, right? The next one that's, that's easy is the delete because it's exactly the same thing as a find by ID. The only difference is you're using a delete and you change your message. So I go through that process. If you have data available, if you do not have any data, you have to create a, a post first. And then I go to get, get my ID, delete, and then I do patch last. Once I've done everything else, then I look at it and say, well, this is being used a lot. I want to create middleware or this is being used a lot and I want to create middleware, but create your middleware last. So for your assignment, if you can get through all of the setup and you don't have to do this much setup, but hopefully this clarifies the process and lets you feel more empowered by what you have available. And at this point, we're 40 minutes in. So even if we were very strict on the three hours, now when I was, <laughs> they were super strict about it. As a matter of fact, they would sit there and at the time, I mean, if you were a minute late, they'd start to say, oh, wait, wait a minute, right? Three hours, that's what you get. And so I'm not strict about it. I think that's a, overly pedantic way to do. We're worried about competency. We want you to learn. I don't care if it takes you the next 40 hours. It has to be in Sunday by midnight PST time. And that's 11.59 p.m. If it's after that, then it's late and there's nothing that can be done with it. But feel free to take all the time today, tomorrow, and Sunday until late to get it and work through it. We did all of the standard setup. I'm gonna make this video available to you in a few minutes. You can, we went fairly fast. I'm sure, I don't know if any of you followed along, uh, but I did say a power hour. And, uh, but the video will be there, put it on 1.5 speed, shoot through it on anything that you have a question on if you have to do it. We covered everything that's required so all you have to really focus on are the routes. Everything else is in here. With some extra tricks. Any other questions before I stop recording? All right, I'm gonna stop recording. Of course, if you have questions, you can still ask them. Well, that is if I can ever find the stop recording button. Uh -huh.